not that you would solve it this way, it would maybe actually kind of be more difficult, but could you, could you find the center of gravity of the system, and because it's zero friction, if you find the center of gravity of those two uh, spheres, right. you would consider that, and it's always at a set distance from the circle, mm -hmm. so you could consider that your particle Our and calculate all the, calculate all the uh, yeah. angles based off that. Yes, you should be able to, yes. Mm -hmm. Finding the angular measurement toward that center of gravity the for, for your initial for your initial condition. No. Well, or maybe that's just going to be straight there. Yeah. So you, the the actually just take the rock, double mass mass m and double m right, and then just do your centroid centroid position between the two or center of mass between the two. Find that location, and then look at what the geometry is on how that would relate to angle theta, theta plus something theta plus something to get you to that center of mass. So for example, so for example, if you know that the center of mass starts at a certain position, mm -hmm. it'll end at the same position too, so you can actually find that angle just based off that alone. Should be able to, yes. Nice thinking, good. Okay, that was a little longer than I wanted to spend on this stuff. Um, I wanna get back over to the impulse momentum concept with you, but I thought it was useful to go through some of the trig and geometry type of items. So let's, um, in the interest of time, since we only have about 15 or so minutes left today, I think what I'd like to do is at least get the concept of angular impulse momentum out here on the table, and then I'll come back tomorrow and work some uh, linear impulse momentum problems, and then also start working some problems with angular impulse momentum. So let's try to get the angular impulse momentum concept out here. And you're going to love this because this is familiar territory. How did we, how did we develop the linear impulse momentum concepts? We started with good old Newton, F equals MA. Yeah. And I'll just write it F in vector form yes. equals M dV dt. Uh -oh. That's the key. Don't forget it. You kick dt over and integrate, and you've got the concept. And remember, these are vector equations. So we get the G2 minus G1, so the symbols we're using in this book, that's equal to the linear impulse. It's your linear impulse. Okay. Now, and remember this is for the system. If, if you have multiple masses, multiple masses in motion, then the unbalanced forces acting create, over time, an impulse, which would then change the momentum in the system, which are those products of mass times velocity. Okay. Angular impulse momentum starts with something almost as elementary as F equals MA. It starts with a vector cross product that the moment that you studied, for instance, statics, the, a moment about some reference point <coughs> is equal to the position vector from the reference point crossed with the active force. Feel good? But this, on the right side, is equal to the mass times <coughs> dV dt. If we kick dt over to the other side and integrate, get 
this. And we would be integrating over a change in velocity when there's an applied torque or moment acting on the system. So we're going to be integrating this from time over time. And this is called angular impulse. And we'll draw some sketches if we get some time for this. And it's equal to this integral, where we're then integrating over a change in velocity that is imparted. Where a change in velocity is imparted caused by an effective torque acting on the particle over time. Now let's take a look at that. And actually, let's go ahead and carry this out. What we get on the right side here is R crossed with MV2 minus R crossed with MV1. And in grading your exams, some of you are a little sloppy about not using your vector symbolism. When you're doing impulse momentum problems, whether it be linear or angular, make sure that you use your vector symbolism, because otherwise it doesn't make any sense. What symbol does your physics book use for angular, mo angular um, momentum? You see, you see there's a lever arm. This is another way of phrasing this is moment of momentum. You see the lever arm there? Moment of momentum. Okay? But we call it just angular momentum for simplicity. What symbol does your physics book use? You remember? Momentum. For angular momentum. I'll tell you what this book uses. <laughs> they use capital H. Capital H. So this is H2 at when the object has speed 2 associated with it, minus H1, and that's equal to delta H. So the angular impulse is equal to the change in the angular momentum. Oh, there is a subscript here needed. There's a subscript that's needed because you have to be referenced to some point about which you're measuring your, your position vectors. Your position vectors have to be measured from some location. I'm a little uncertain about how we navigate around that cross product when we're integrating. Yeah, okay. So let's Let's draw something, and let me draw something that's two-dimensional instead of 3D. Here's our point, reference point. Here's the particle. And here's a position vector to get us to that particle. And then that particle's in motion. So it, let's, say it's, let's say its velocity is this way. If its velocity is that way and it's carrying mass m, then its momentum is in that same direction. Right? Yes. If its velocity is that in that direction, and here's a reference point, arbitrary or convenient given a certain type of problem you're trying to do. So you have a position vector to get you to the particle, and then there's its momentum it's carrying at that instant. Now, what we want to do is we want to form that cross product, R cross MV. So let's see. The R vector projects out this way, so here is, here is your angle theta, effectively. Now there's a couple ways we could look at that. R cross MV is 
is a cross product. One way of handling it is to utilize a determinant where you have your unit vector elements here. You have your R components in the middle row. And then you have your momentum con components and you could factor the M outside. I'm just going to leave it in there. M, V, X, M, V, Y, M, V, Z. So that, and then you can expand that determinant. And integrate the determinant? Well, actually, this has already been integrated. Oh, okay. Oops. Okay. Right there. Okay. So, what is the, and this is a vector, isn't it? And the, this vector is orthogonal to what? Both R and V. Both are mutually, right? It's orthogonal. And then how do you find its direction? R cross right. MV, just like you did R cross F. Uh, just like you did R cross F, right? Okay, so R, fingers, into the momentum. So if you, if you have a momentum directed like this and an R vector directed like this, the cross product comes out of the paper at you by the right hand rule, by the right hand rule. Okay. What's the magnitude of this thing? What's the magnitude of the cross product? It's the product of each magnitude. So it's R times MV times the sine of the angle that exists between the two vectors. Times the sine of the angle between the two vectors. So it is, I want to show you this. If I come inside here, here's theta. A drawing, sorry about this. Here's, here's a right triangle inside here. Sorry for being messy. But R, let's see, which way do I want to go? Oh, yeah, here we go. R sine of theta is this length right here, isn't it? Right? So here's R sine theta, R sine theta times the magnitude of that momentum. See the concept similar to what you experienced with moments? Mm -hmm. Okay, so R sine theta this is one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is pick up the sine component of that perpendicular to R, but I'm not going to worry about it. Just distance and flow is okay. approach. Yeah. Momentum. Okay. Now, I have an, just enough time to expand this to expand this cross product with you. I think. How much time do I have? Folks. Okay, I, did, I got some time left. Is the MV always in the direction of the velocity? Excuse me? Is MV always in the direction of velocity? Think about it. Is MV always in the direction of velocity? It would have to be, right? It has to be, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a scalar times the velocity is all. Yeah. So now, how do you folks expand a 3 by 3 determinant? <coughs> do you use what are do you use what's called what are called cofactors and minors? Or do you, yeah. you might like the way I do it, and you might not. Do you extend it out then? Uh, that's another way of doing it. Watch the way I do it. <laughs> Each product is going to have three elements in it when you do your products of terms. So if you go diagonally this direction, those are going to be positive products. So I'm going to have I hat. And I'm going to have Ry times MVZ. Okay? Now, when I go the other direction, oh, and then here's what's going to happen. We're, we're going to keep doing that. Here I only pick <coughs> up two products when I come off the diagonal, and I have to whip around and pick up a third element. That's going to be a K-directed element. And then if I pick up this element, I have to whip around and grab those two. Right? Okay. 
Similarly, when I go the other direction, these are then going to be negative products. Now, the reason I wanted to describe that first is because I want to go ahead and get the I elements all together right away. So the I elements are going to involve a positive product of these terms, which is R, Y, M, V, Z. And then I'm going to come this way and pick up I this way, the negative of these products. And I whip around and have to grab these two. So it has to be a minus an R, Z, M, V, Y. <coughs> That's the I term of the cross product. Plus, now the J terms. The J terms are going to be obtained by coming through here, my positive products. So I'm going to have a J times an RZ MVX. And then to pick up the J terms going negative, I have to come this way. I pick up Rx and have to come around and grab one more. So I minus an Rx MVZ. And last but not least, I have to pick up the K terms. So positive, I'm going to pick up Rx MVY. And I have to subtract off the R, Y, M, V, X. Just a second. This cross product is... Don't you have to subtract on J hat terms? An H sub X, I. I got it. I believe. I have an H, X here, I, plus an H, Y, J, plus an H, Z, K. Did I write them down right? Yeah. Okay. I don't know about your whipping around business. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, those. <laughs> those would do that with fewer terms. Yeah. Okay. The idea is, and this this works for large determinants. You go this way, and you have to come around and pick up the correct number of elements. Though, if it's a three by three, each each pass has to have three elements in it. Those are positives if you go that way. And if you go this way on it, you take the negatives of those. Oh, now, what a lot yes. of you have learned is you write down I. You write down I, and then you expand this little 2 by 2. Yeah. Min it's called a minor. Then you take the negative of this, right. and you take its minor. Yeah, that's how I'm and used to Then you use positive K. OK. But I bet you I can do this faster than you can do that. Okay, we'll have a contest sometime. <laughs> okay. okay, we'll see you tomorrow.